you know, um, he, he really changed my life. Uh -huh. yeah. Transformed my life. Yeah. Built me up yes, from a little boy yes, into this man that you see today. Yes, All right. And it humbles me in order to really stand before you and to communicate stuff that's really near and dear to my heart. Um, I'm truthfully blessed to come up in the household to where um, I had parents, aunts and uncle, cousins, who really embraced me in a way that only a blessed child could see. Amen. Um, I think, thank God for my beautiful wife, Barbara, and my two bodyguards I recognize as my sons. Yeah. Yeah, um, you guys can stand up. Um, yeah. So, uh, so just, just, let, just let you know, that if you come towards me, my, my bodyguards right there gonna get you. So um, I'm, I'm blessed and I thank them for accompanying me and and I tell you, God has really um, allowed me to, like I said, come up in a household to where I had a good foundation. And really um, now, as the man of God has spoken, you know, I, I speak about relationships. That's something that's near and dear to my heart. I've just released my second book called Broken Vows, Keeping It Together. <laughs> and I, I truthfully, um, you know, I dedicated the books to my parents. That's who I dedicated the book to, as they will be celebrating 50 years of marriage. All right. Um, in February of this year. Right. And, and it's such a blessing because I see my uncle Ike and I'm thinking they've been celebrating, you know, I think my almost 40 years. Close, getting close to that number. Then my Aunt Veronica and Uncle Snooky. Um, I'm just, I'm getting to a point of the people that God surrounds you with to be good examples. They may not be perfect examples, but when they're fitly joined together as one, it is a perfect example in the eyes of God. That's the thing for which you have to understand. So if we could please stand, um, we'd like for us to go to the book of Genesis. I'm gonna give you two scriptures and then I'm gonna get into what I'm going to be talking about today. In the book of Genesis, Genesis 2 and 24, I'm going to be speaking from the Amplified Bible. And, it's, and it speaks, and it says, For this reason a man shall leave his father and his mother, and shall be joined to his wife, and they shall be of one flesh. The father knew what he was doing when he took the man, and he also took the woman. But it's interesting how the father said they should be one flesh. Right. How is that possible when you have two individual human beings and you want them to be one flesh? Mm -hmm. That's the spiritual makeup of God. He's because you're supposed to be on one accord. Right. You're supposed to think alike. You're supposed to function as one. There's no separation of you two because I brought you together. Man didn't bring you together. He said, I. God takes fully control of the thing that releases out of his mouth. Right. Because he has all authority. Yes. Right. Now I would like you to go to Numbers 30, 2 and 6, 2 through 6, which he has the man of God, which is recognized as Moses, one of the, his sent one, one who actually had the ability to speak into people's lives and change their lives. And Moses spoke and he said, he speak to the head of the tribe of the people of Israel, saying, this is what the Lord has commanded. If a man vows a vow to the Lord, notice he said to the Lord, starting with the Lord, and swear an oath, which is a solemn promise, mm -hmm. and binds himself by a pledge, which is a commitment, he shall not be Broke, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceeded out of his mouth. Mm -hmm. If a woman vows a vow to the Lord and bounds her mouth, pledged while within her father's house out of her youth, her father shall hear the voice and pledge with which she has bound herself and said nothing up to her. Then I'll 
that all her vows shall be stand, and every pledge which she had bound herself shall stand. But if the father opposes her on the day and lets her hear of it, no vow of hers, no pledge for which she has bound herself shall stand. And the Lord will forgive her because the father opposes her. You may be seated. The, the title of what I'm going to be talking with you about, and I, I, I sing with people, I don't want you to think I forgot about you. Um, what I'm going to talk about applies to singles, but primarily marriage, because you are single, developing into being what God called you to when it comes to your marriage. So I want you to turn to your left, and you said, neighbor, neighbor, marriage is for grown folks. Turn to your other neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, marriage is for grown folks. Marriage is for grown folks. When God, when the Father spoke these things into people's lives, and he speaks something, he understands that first we have to be developed. It's interesting that when the Father was talking about the, the, the wife, and talking about the woman, he said, go to your father. She had to go to her father for approval. Uh, and you know, growing up a lot of times, he said, no, go to your father and make sure your father release you unto your husband. The reason why the father understands that I am a protector of my daughter. But in the beginning, in, the, um, in Genesis, notice it said, the son was also in his mother and his father's house. So his mother and his father has to look up on the makeup of the son to see if the son is ready to take on a wife. He said, leave your mother in your father's house and make sure you cleave and cling to your wife. Make sure you protect her. The parents have prepared the son to go and receive his wife. Notice that he didn't recognize him as a child. He said, your wife. When it comes to growth, we need to understand growth deals with development. You're in your household in order to be developed. That's when, when I watch um, my parents, I watch how my mother and my father interacted to one another as someone who was single, as a child. I observed them, not to say that they did not have disagreement, for which they did, but my observation, I want to see how did they interact with one another. Mm -hmm. You may disagree, but I still love you. There is a process in how I communicate to you if I want you to receive the information for which I get. It's the process that we go through. So when, when I'm being developed in my process, I want to make sure I use wisdom. I make sure I'm wise because ultimately, it's supposed to be for my benefit and for my good. So when I communicate, it needs to be on fertile and good ground. When I recognize you as my wife, I don't abuse you. I don't mistreat you because I look at you like I look at myself. When I embrace you, because the man of God just said it, because we are one. There's no way in the world I'm going to hit you upside my head because I wouldn't hit myself upside the head. Because if we are one. Remember I said, marriage is for grown folks. It's only someone who's immature and don't recognize the vessel for which your wife is or your husband is if I'm going to mistreat you. Because right. I haven't developed and I haven't grown up. And I don't know how to stand up on my own two feet as a man. All right. Or a woman. I recognize that the way that I'm supposed to be treated is the way that my father is well pleased. I get my instruction from my heavenly father, which goes through my parents, which comes to me. All right. Ultimately, the father is in charge. All right. Because I recognize, ultimately, my marriage and my relationship is an investment. When I invest in something that is good, I have an expectation of a good return. Uh -huh. yeah. My initial investment does not supersede my return. Mm -hmm. When I invest into my wife, understand I expect a return because it's for my good. Right. Yeah. I don't have a problem with giving her things because I can trust her. It's through the understanding stage of me getting to know her to see if I can trust her when I open up all of my spiritual insides uh -huh. so I can pour into her. Right. That comes through the process of getting to know you as someone who is single. But when I develop in someone that is an adult, 
a mature young man, a man that understands that it's for the greater good. I want to ensure that my father is well pleased. Right. That good, not good in, in what faithful servant. The father want to make sure you are faithful to this word that's called a vow. Mm -hmm. The word of God, it said, if you vow a vow unto me, make sure you hold on to that vow. That God always hold up his end of the bargain. God always holds up his end of the vow. The vow is defined as a solemn promise. Man. So the question I ask people, who did you promise it to? Uh -huh. That is the key question. If I understand it, I promise it to God, then my communication is between me and God. Yeah. I understand that God is the chief authoritative person over my life. Yeah. If my wife tells me, she was just telling me um, last night, she was saying, honey, honey, I'm, you know, I'm having this pain and stuff like that. So what I did, she said, could you, you know, rub this area for me? As I rub on the area that she asked for, I also pray. Uh -huh. I said, Father, whatever it is, allow my holy hands to heal. Take your time, Dad. Take your time, Dad. That's because I understand the Father's in charge. Yes. She don't have to hear it, but she feels the spiritual touch that I gave her. It doesn't come from me. It comes from the chief father, the chief architecture that's in charge. That's what it's all about. Yeah. When you stood before God and you said and you spoke this word before God, understand you didn't speak it before man. Oh, yeah. That's the problem with this world. We think that we're having a conversation with mankind. No, if you understand the origin of the relationship, mm -hmm. my chief relationship is with God. Yeah. For him I live yeah. and for him I die. Yeah. That's what it is all about. That's what I understand. Your mouth, for which you speak out a word. Look, just understand. God breathed life into this word. And so if he breathed life into his word, and I'm his most valuable thing, that he breathed life into me. Mm -hmm. So when I speak and I communicate, I should be reverberating the things that God has already communicated with on the inside of me. Yeah. So if it's on the inside of me and it pours out of me, I speak with confidence. Yeah. I have no fear for the thing I'm going to speak. Yeah. In the book of Ephesians 5 and 21 tells us, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Yeah. Wives, understand, no, it says wives, submit to your husband as unto who? The Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife and Christ is the head of the church. Throughout the whole entire scripture, I understand, notice that the Father said, the Lord and Christ. We have a problem when we stop at the individual and don't focus on the one that gave the information. Uh -huh. He said, the Lord and Christ. So when you submit, you submit it unto the Lord, not unto your husband. I want to ensure that my Father is pleased with the things for which I do. So if I can do those things, then my Father will look down on me and say, that good and faithful servant. All right, all right. That's what he will call you. In 1 Peter 3 and 7 says, Likewise, husband, live with your wife in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel. The father never called her weak. He said, as the weaker vessel, meaning she's gentle. She's like a flower for which you shall plant. Make sure you put the nourishing things around her that she needs. It's nothing like a woman who receives certain things and you hear the things that she like. Right. One thing that my wife loves, she loves when I bring her flowers, when I brought her some flowers and she had a vase. She said, oh, let me go get this vase. I want to put it here. And she dressed it up and I just released my book. I'm going to put your book right here because one thing about my wife, she deals with beautification. So when, one thing about me for which I recognize, but understand the things for which I do, the Father does things in order to bless my life. So if he's here to bless my wife, I take care of the things which he brought into my life. Amen. So the thing, I'd have no problem saying, okay, dear, when it comes to beautiful case, something that needs to be dressed up and stuff like that, I give it to my wife. If you come to my house, I'll tell people, I have nothing to do for it. I just paid for it. My wife cleaned it up. <laughs> I'm let you know, you come to my house, my wife did it. I work on the outside. I... But understand that the father deals with the inside. 
I recognize the benefit of the relationship. My wife comes in, honey, I didn't ask the baby, you need to make sure you let me know what do you need? Because as someone who understands my role in your life, I want to make sure that I'm doing the thing that the Father communicated to me to do. That's why he said we're fitly joined together as one. It's in oneness that we function and operate. So as, as being a wife, it's important that you understand in Proverbs, I think Proverbs did an amazing job. He said, he that finds a wife, finds a good thing and obtain what? Favor from the Lord. It's interesting that the father didn't say that the husband obtained favor. It said the wife was recognized as favor. So if the wife is recognized as favor, I will ensure that I take care of my favor. Because I benefit the things I put my hands to flows through the favor of God. I'm favored because of her. Notice he eliminated the husband, not executing the husband. He said, no, this is the direct communication I have with the wife. And when I intercede the relationship that I have with her, important that I listen to my wife. She's a good source that the Father has given unto me. He didn't give it to nobody else. He gave her unto me. So I take ownership of the relationship when I said I do. Now I didn't say I can't because the Father gave me everything that I need to do. Notice you said I do. I will. I will submit. I will do the thing for which you call me unto doing. So when you can understand those things, you understand the man's greatest treasure in his life is his wife. The greatest treasure is his wife. So the development state of being someone that's single, developing into a wife, single people understand. If a man unrecognize you as being someone that is important, he's no longer gonna look at you as a little girl, a little child. He first sees you as a wife. And you will recognize how he treats you, how he communicates to you if he sees you as a wife. One thing that my wife, and, she, and, and, and understand I'm an example unto my boys. One thing that my wife doesn't do, she doesn't open the door. My mom, she knows that she would make me upset. I will ask her, what do you think you're doing? Because she's a queen unto me. When it comes to, doesn't matter door, house door, car door, doesn't matter. The thing about it is, is because as a protector, I understand I need to make sure I protect my queen. That's what I call her. We need to understand those things. Psalms 30 and 5 says, For the anger is but for a moment, and his favor is for a lifetime. Yeah. Weeping may endure for a night, but the joy comes in the morning. Understand, it said the anger is for a limited time, but to recognize that the Father called her as what? Favor. Your wife is designed to bring joy in your life. She's there to bring joy. There's a way you can work through the disagreement. That's what the scripture said. It's an anger for a short period of time. And if we can get past the anger and find joy, your relationship and your marriage will be blessed. I have no doubts about that. I understand that because my father said that. Favor is a friendly regard shown towards one to another. Understand, the one that is super, which is the Heavenly Father, is the one that spoken. Mm -hmm. I didn't call her favor. My father said she's favored. So why wouldn't I listen to what he calls her and do what she commanded me to do? Mm -hmm. Those are the things which are required of, of us. And it's interesting, as I, as I went through the scripture, she's not only a, a reflection of favor, she's also a reflection of the Holy Spirit. All right. She is. Mm -hmm. If you go to the book of John 14 and 26, it said, but the helper, understand the wife is recognized as what? The helpmate. An advisor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father was sin in whose name? My name. She comes in the name of our Heavenly Father. And he would teach you all things that bring in remembrance for which I said unto you. Mm -hmm. 
the one thing about a wife, and my wife does this, and, and, and family, I'm not only speaking to you, I'm speaking to myself. And sometimes my wife says, honey, I think you should go that way, and I'll be driving like, baby, you don't think I've earned my driver's license? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be showing, I'll be saying, I don't say that to her. I'm like, okay, dear. No, <laughs> but within my inside, I'm like, okay, I'm going to drive. How many years? Think I can't drive? Okay, I guess not. So, but I also have to be remembers that what? She's my helpmate. She sees things that I probably can't see. I understand sometimes probably get on our nerve, Kim D's. We're like, you're yeah, nagging me sometimes. But the thing I have to recognize, she's my helpmate. Just like she helped your children, she ultimately wants to help you. The enemy wants you to have this anger towards her. Uh -huh. The father wants you to love her. Amen. There's a completely difference in receiving the information. When we can understand that thing, when we can understand the relationship, as women, you need to understand when it comes to dealing with our husband. Ephesians 5 and 31 says, Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother's house and hold fast to his wife. The two shall be of one flesh. That's what it says. That's why I'm so blessed to be in a household where I saw my mother and my father. They show you the way that the father designed it to be done. Uh -huh. And I understand that we have a lot of single parents out here raising our children. But the one thing that the father doesn't do, he does not leave you without wise counsel. Yeah. That's the reason why I pointed out my aunts who've been married um, 30, you know, 30, 40 plus. We have Ms. Grant, her, and Deacon Harvey, who, who's going on to be with the Lord. They've been married for, what, 40, 42 years? Amen. Amen. But the thing about it is, I've known her all my life. I've also watched them as well. The father surrounds you with wise counsel. If someone is mistreating you, you are a precious value that the Father has created. And when you beautiful ladies recognize that, you will stand up and recognize you should be treated in a particular way. Uh -huh. That's the way I communicate to my sisters. I call them beautiful. I said, you are an angel. You're precious unto God. I cannot speak unto you in a way that the Father has recognized you. I speak into your life, and I pray that you will see what I am speaking. So it's, it's, it's important that we mature in our parents' house. My father and mother had taught me so many things because I developed in-house. When we understand as a husband, it's I recognize as a house band. That means our arms extend around the house. Our arms go around the house as protector. Husband and brother recognized as a house band. The father requires you to abandon the house and keep the house together. If an intruder breaks into your house, the husband should be the first one that stands up, not the wife. I'll be back. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, family, it makes me so upset sometimes when I see the woman seem like she take more of a responsibility of the house than a man does. I said, how is it? I mean, the other thing in my, my, when it comes to taking groceries, or it, it makes me upset. I got my like, bank, we got them two grown boys there. Let them take it out. What are you doing? It's because we're raising our children up in the way that they should go. The question, I'm like, how are you raising your boys up? Sometimes she thinks I'm a little hard on my boy, but my thing is, I said, baby, I said, listen, the one thing that women complain about is a man not standing up. I'm teaching my boys to stand up on their own two feet, take on to their own wife, protect their wife, but be an example for their children. All right, now. That's the responsibility. That's their mandate over their house. Because the one thing that we, the two things that, that men and women seem like they struggle with, women struggle with this word called submission. Men struggle with the word called leadership. When it comes to a woman, that's, that's why you see, a man may not be around, but that woman would take on two, three, four, five jobs yes, sir. to make yes, sure sir. that family is taken care of. Yes, sir. When it comes to a man, like, oh, you want to take it? We submit. Got it. You got it? It's just easy for us to do this thing. But the father required us to lead. As a leader, my thing is that I'm going to do what I said I'm going to do. If I bring a child into the world, guess what? I'm going to do what I created to do. 
right. So the two areas that we struggle with, God said, no, you need to submit unto the Lord as unto Christ. Men, make sure you take your leadership role and stand up as a man. But that, but if you look throughout the world today, people wonder why is the world in so much turmoil? Because the devil is out for the family. If you get the family together, the world will change. Uh -huh. I don't have any doubts about that because the thing we have to do, we have the point number one, we have the mature. We have to mature. We have the development. Understand, when it comes to maturing, it's a slow, careful, consistent process. It is a process not going to happen overnight. It is a process that we have to go through when it comes to maturing. A lot of times, we don't want to mature in the process in being the person that God has created you to be. God did not put you on this race to run it by yourself. He said, no, I brought you in this life in order for you to mature. Ephesians 4 and 14 and 15 said, then we will no longer be an infant tossing back and forth to and fro like the wave, blowing here and there, every wind teaching us on the cunning and crafting of the people. Deceitful scheme. Instead, speaking in truth and love, we will grow and be cunning, become ever respected maturing of the body. Understand, to and fro, when we were immature, we're back and forth, to and fro, here and there. But when we mature, we put an anchor yes, in the thing for which we are taught. Yes, sir. We have to develop our children. We have to develop in being a husband. We have to develop in being a wife. Mm -hmm. Those are the things for which we are required to do. When you're someone that is being developed, you inquire of wisdom. You'll be someone that is ready to transition in this thing that's called a marriage. Because marriage is for grown folks. It is not something that you should play with. Because understand, for God I live, and for my marriage I die. That is the type of mindset you should have. You do whatever is required for you to do to ensure that you're successful in your marriage. Point number two is commitment. We have to be committed to the things that we said. Back in the day when we were growing up, my, grand, my grandfather used to tell me, he said, son, be the man of your word. Mm -hmm. Understand, the father, by his word, he breathed it into existence, and the father is a God by his word. If you said that you love your husband, if you said that you love your wife, be a man or woman of your word. It's nothing like, I mean, you can make a mistake and you can own up to it and say, you know what, I've erred in this way. You know, I have a lot of respect for you because you are what? A person of your word. You committed to the thing for which you said. You said, you know, I've erred in this area. And you know what? I need to make a change. We need to make sure that we are committed to the thing for which we said. Proverbs tell us, commit to the Lord whatever you should do and be established in your plan. He said, be someone that is committed to whatever you say and whatever you say you're going to stand for. We have to stand for something in this life. One thing when I, when I walk this way of life, I'm an example unto the world because I carry the name of my father. But I also recognize that I'm also a link to my wife. All right. Whenever I have a communication with another female, understand my wife is still present. Yeah. Uh -huh. She may not physically be there, yeah. but spiritually she's there. Yeah. My wife can tell when something is wrong with just by communicating with me over the phone. All right. Because the father is in the center. Mm -hmm. He lets her know when something just isn't right, just by the tone of my voice. Yeah. She said, honey, what much wrong? Something is not right. Mm -hmm. Something just seems, even when I come home, she can look at my demeanor and tell. Because we're fitly joined together as one. Do you have to be committed to this relationship, this marriage that the Father has commanded into your life? All right. You commit yourself one to another. Submit yourself unto the Word of God. 
And if you do those things, your relationship will be blessed. Mm -hmm. And point number three is eternity. The Father brought you and your wife together to stand for eternity. Right. To the end of time. Mm -hmm. To invest in the thing that the Father has called you to do. When you can understand the thing, John 5 and 24 said, Truly, truly, I said to you, whatever you hear my word, believe him. Who sent me has as an eternal life. See, the Father been sent in your marriage and relationship as an eternal life. He said, I'm there when you need me. Do the good as well as the bad. I believe that when you find a good thing, a good treasure, it may not be perfect, but when you find a good thing, it is a perfect fit. And the Father is perfecting your relationship. If you allow him to perfect your relationship, after a while, you'll realize your relationship is perfect. I've had a conversation with my parents, and the one thing they said, you know what, they said, son, I'm glad we held on in there. I'm glad. I'm glad we stuck in there. Amen. I'm glad we did not give up because we are living our best life. Amen. It's nothing like hearing your parents say we're living our best life. Amen. It's, I mean, it blesses my heart to see relationship and marriage hang in there. It's not, it doesn't say that you're not going to go through some rough exactly. times. But if you hang in there and you hold on to God's ever-changing word, your relationship will last, he will stay committed, and you will make it to the end of time. Right. Yes, you God will. bless and God speak. All right, Jack. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right.